Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. India condemns terrorism on international platforms. Pakistan-backed Khalistani separatists continue anti-India campaign on foreign soil. And Baloch resistance against Pakistan army growing in Balochistan. India, a victim of Pakistan-sponsored cross-border terrorism, has named and shamed the perpetrators of terrorism on various international platforms. Recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi took a dig at countries supporting cross-border terrorism, indirectly hitting out at Pakistan. During his address at SEO summit, PM Modi called all member countries to fight against the menace. Take a look. India has been a victim of terrorism for decades now, all thanks to neighboring Pakistan, which has remained a breeding ground of terrorists. The Islamic nation has created an elaborate ecosystem to support terrorism beyond its geographical boundaries. On the other hand, India over the years has been the one to denounce Pakistan's terror activities and exposed it on various international platforms. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the SEO Summit 2023 held virtually pointed out that promoters of cross-border terrorism are a problem for the world to handle. Excellencies, Atankwad, Khetriya, Ema Bashwik Shanti Geliye, Pramuk Khatra Bana Hua Hai. Ham Chunoti Se Nipate Geliye, Nirnay Karavai Avashak Hai. Atankwad, Chahe Kasi Bi Rup Meho, Kisi Bi Abhivakti Meho. हमें इसकी विरुद्ध मिलकर लड़ाई करनी होगी कुछ देश क्रॉस बॉर्डर टेररिज्म को अपनी नीतियों के इंस्ट्रूमेंट के रूप में इस्तेमाल करते हैं आतंकवादियों को पनाह देते हैं एससीओ को ऐसे देशों की आलोचना में कोई संकोच नहीं करना हाउएवर the truth about cross-border terrorism remains clear. Islamabad has provided safe haven to various terror outfits and continues to use them as proxies against India. Pakistan Army provides safe passage to these terrorists to infiltrate into India's Jammu and Kashmir and carry out terror activities. Just a few days before the SEO summit, an infiltration attempt was made in the Machal sector in Kupwara along the line of control. Indian security forces neutralized four Pakistani terrorists in an operation. Islamabad has failed to realize the consequences of sheltering and nurturing these terror outfits in his territory. On various occasions, these terrorists have even targeted Pakistan. In February, a major blast inside a mosque in Peshawar killed over 100 people and 200 were injured. Experts believe that the world did not realize its mistake of not criticizing the perpetrators of terrorists until an event like the 9-11 terror attack happened in the United States. The last 40 years has been uh, fighting terrorism, which is cross-border from our Western neighbor, Pakistan, which has used uh, terrorism as an instrument of its foreign policy. And uh, the Americans and others only came on board when 9-11 uh, happened. So the world has been following these dualistic policies, the hypocrisy about these things. And now even uh, Prime Minister Modi in 2018, when he was uh, 16, when he was in uh, United Nations, he had very clearly mentioned about the uh, that the world has not even been able to define what terrorism is. So India has been consistently flagging it across platforms everywhere in order to tell the world that this is an existential threat to the humanity and this must be contended, must be fought uh, rigorously and genuinely without uh, indulging in the good terrorists, bad terrorists, my terrorists, your terrorists and those are the kind of geopolitical tools. 
India made a policy shift vis-à-vis -vis Pakistan after the 2016 Uri terrorist attack, advocating the elimination of terrorism from the subcontinent. Like India, the rest of South Asia suffers from terrorism created and sponsored by Pakistan. After the Peshawar school massacre, Prime Minister Modi had even stated that there is no good or bad terrorism. As the world suffers with extremism and terrorism, India stands firm with its motto to condemn and eliminate terrorism with the help of its global partners. A group of pro-Khalistan separatists settled abroad continues to run an anti-India campaign on the behest of Pakistan's spy agencies. They are holding a so-called Khalistan referendum to demand for a separate Sikh state in Indian Punjab and are attacking Indian embassies and consulates in Canada, Australia, UK and the United States. India has strongly opposed the use of foreign soil to run anti-India campaigns. We have a report. Pakistan-backed Khalistan movement is again on the rise, with its motive to demean India's image internationally. Recently, pro-Khalistan elements to execute revenge on India towards the Indian consulate in San Francisco, damaging India's property on foreign soil for the second time in a year. Similar events had played out in March when Khalistani elements vandalized the same consulate in San Francisco, all while chanting pro-Khalistan slogans. These acts by pro-Khalistan radicals expose Pakistan-backed terrorist plots to keep the Khalistan issue on the boil, to disturb the peace and tranquility in India. However, countries witnessing pro-Khalistan activities have now realized their fault. Well, first of all, let me say that these are deeply regrettable events. Um, we take very seriously the safety and security of diplomats uh, that are living in the United States. Um, we have been in close contact with Indian authorities, with local law enforcement. We are trying to take the necessary steps to ensure that Indian diplomatic community feels um, safe and secure here, and we'll continue with that work going forward. India's external affairs minister has also warned that partner countries like the US, the UK, Canada and Australia were ruining relations with the country by giving space to Khalistani extremists. His comments came in response to threat posters being circulated widely in Vancouver and Toronto. The posters feature the names and numbers of Indian high commissioners and consulate generals. हमारे जो पार्टनर देश जो हैं जैसे कनाडा है अमेरिका है यूके है ऑस्ट्रेलिया है जहां कभी-कभी खालिस्तानी एक्टिविटीज होती हैं हमने इनको रिक्वेस्ट की है कि वो उनको खालिस्तानियों को स्पेस न दें क्योंकि उन जो उनकी सोच जो है ये ये रैडिकल एक्सट्रीमिस्ट विचारधारा जो है वो ना हमारे लिए अच्छा है ना उनके लिए है ना हमारे रिश्तों के लिए तो ये ये जो पोस्टर का विषय जो है ये हम जरूर उन सरकारों से उठाएंगे A large group of people who migrated from India during the insurgency in Punjab in late 1980s have kept the Khalistan ideology alive with the financial and logistic help from Pakistan's inter-services intelligence. In the recent years, they have started targeting the Indian missions abroad and releasing videos and posters on social media with a threat to target Indian diplomats. Some Western countries call it a freedom of expression, but India has strongly condemned such acts of terrorism to organize violent protests, attacking property and threatening the diplomats posted at missions abroad. It is a matter of concern that freedom of expression and speech is once again being misused by anti-India elements uh, based in Canada and elsewhere. So the issue is not about freedom of expression but it's uh, misuse for advocating violence, uh, for propagating separatism and for um, legitimizing terrorism. So that's actually what 
we would like to uh, you know emphasize um we have also uh, had instances uh, or situations where uh, you know where uh, these kind of threats have also taken place be the us uh, australia and the uk uh, to name a few um you would have seen uh, external affairs minister himself mention in the context of i think prime minister trudeau's comments and that uh, he external affairs minister strongly believes that country should not pander to vote bank politics in recent days three prominent pro khalistan leaders were killed abroad on may 6 khalistan commando force chief paramjeet singh panjwa was shot dead in pakistan's lahore he had escaped the pakistan in 1995 On June 15, Avtar Singh Khanda, a member of the Khalistan Liberation Force, died at a hospital in the United Kingdom's Birmingham. On June 18, Khalistan Tiger Force Chief Hardeep Singh Nijjar was shot dead in the parking lot of a gurdwara in Canada's Surrey. Khalistan Commando Force, Khalistan Liberation Force, and Khalistan Tiger Force are designated terrorist outfits in India. The leaders and supporters have taken shelter abroad and have been running anti-India campaigns on foreign soil. Let's move to Balochistan, the largest and resource-rich province of Pakistan, where nationalist movement is continuing. The Baloch have been fighting Pakistani oppression politically and with arms. As Pakistan army has intensified its operation against the Baloch freedom fighters they are also facing counter attack we have a report on june 24 a convoy of five vehicles carrying pakistan's paramilitary personnel and officials of spy agency the isi was targeted by a suicide bomber in tubat city of balochistan the attack in which a policeman was killed was carried by 25 year old female suicide bomber Sumaya Baloch of the Baloch Liberation Army In a press statement the BLS said that Sumaya was a journalist and worked for the outfit's media wing for 5 years It claims that hundreds of Baloch fidayeens including Baloch women are part of Majid Brigade and are ready to wreak havoc on the enemies The BLA has threatened Pakistan and China to immediately withdraw from Balochistan सबसे बड़ा जो एक पहलू है वो एक आजादी का पहलू है उसके बरस अगर आप देखें तो ये मालूम होता है कि बलूचिस्तान के लोगों की आवाज को कोई सुनने को तैयार नहीं जिस तरह हम देखते हैं कि बलोचों ने अपने हकूक के लिए दुनिया का हर एक प्लेटफॉर्म इस्तेमाल किया हुआ है यानी कि वो अकवा मुतहदा में पंद्रह सालों से मुसलसल ये चला रहे हैं कि हमारे हकूक को सलब किया जा रहा है हमारे ऊपर चाइना को बिठा कर हमारी तजलील की जा रही है हमारे बस्तियों की बस्तियां मिटा दी गई हैं सिर्फ चाइना को फैसिलिटीज करने के लिए बलूचिस्तान में और हमारे बीस हजार से ज्यादा लोग मिसिंग हैं तो ये तमाम पहलुओं को अगर हम देखते हैं तो मेरे ख्याल में यही तसलसल बलोचों को मजबूर कर रहा है कि वो अपने हकूक और आजादी के लिए हर एक हद तक जा सकते हैं इंसर्जेंसी इन रिसोर्स रिच बलोचिस्तान हैज बिन क्रिएटेड बाई पाकिस्तान विच इलीगली ऑक्यूपाइज द रीजन सिंस नाइनटीन फोर्टी एट इट एक्सप्लोर्स इट्स नेचुरल रिसोर्स लाइक गैस कोल लाइम स्टोन एंड मच मोर इन रिटर्न इट हैज गिवन टॉर्चर इन फोर्स डिसअपियरेंसेज and killings of the intellectuals young and educated baloch people it has given birth to insurgency and many baloch have taken up arms to revolt against islamabad especially pakistan army and the inter services intelligence the baloch are fighting for their rights politically and with armed struggle on the other hand pakistan army has increased its cruelty against the baloch and have been abducting torturing and killing the baloch political activists students leaders and intellectuals pakistan has always engaged in some kind of human rights violation or the other uh, if not against its neighbors then against its own people you tell me any decade in pakistan's history 
where it wasn't engaged in terrorism or uh, slaughtering people. In through the 50s, it was uh, 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 Afghanistan. Uh, through the 60s, it was Afghanistan and Bengal. Uh, through the 70s, it became, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Pashtuns uh, uh, and Afghans in general, uh, uh, 80s too. And then in the 90s, it was uh, Balochistan. Uh, uh, 90s onwards, it was Balochistan, Kashmir and all of that. So they've always engaged in human rights violations and they've never really cared about it uh, because they get away with it every single time. There's nothing anyone can do about it. Uh, their passports, their foreign passports, the American and UK passports never get confiscated, so they'll never change their uh, behavior patterns. A large number of Baloch have left Pakistan and settled in other parts of the world. They have been demanding justice by holding protests in front of the United Nations, European Union and other human rights organizations. The other concern of the Baloch is the growing presence of Chinese in Balochistan. China has invested millions of dollars in the construction of Gwadar port as part of its China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project. The indigenous people, especially the fishermen living in the Gwadar, are restricted to do fishing in the area, which has irked them. In past few years, Baloch separatists have been carried out attacks on Chinese workers in Balochistan to show their resistance. The Baloch are seeing no political solution to their issue and have taken up arms to show their resistance against Pakistan and China in Balochistan. The women in Afghanistan have to face severe restrictions imposed by the Taliban government. They are being pushed more into the dark as the new Taliban order has asked beauty salons to close within a month. The banning of beauty salons in the country has shocked the citizens. We have this report. Beauty salons in Afghanistan have been given orders to shut by July 27. This is in addition to the Taliban government's repressive rule over women who are already confined to their homes with bans on no work and study. The closure of beauty salons restricts women's freedom and delivers a harsh economic blow to families who rely on them for income. The Afghans are shocked with this decision. The ایرا باید خودشان بفهمند بعض خانم‌ها سینمیال ناناور خانه ندارن به وضاحت هستن مثلا مرد سرپرست ندارن خود خانم‌ها مجبور هستن کار کنن وظیفه کنن بعضشان دکان‌های آرایشگری دارن مجبور هستن کار کنن دیگه از این نگاه ما هیچ نمی‌بینیم که باید یا بسته شون نظام چه د آرایشگاه لخوان خو سه تکلیف ما تنخ کاری ولی صدا خو یو ما تا یو خو اقدام کاری بلک چرت مثال دا باز خلق وایس دا تعلیمون مثال بد بد نک بند کړی دی د زنانه او دلته ډیر زیات زیات دا په دې کې ډیر زیات مطلب مونږ خبګان خو تعلیمون دی خلاص کې واراش ګاس سمر بندې مونږ لا په خوشال یو اکورډنګ ټو ا ریسنټ سټډی باي د یونایټډ سټیټس د طالبان هاز کمیټډ اګریجیوس سیستماتیک وایلیشنز اف ویمنز رایټس باي ریسټریکټینګ دی اکسس ټو ایجوکیشن اند امپلایمنټ and their ability to move freely in society. The closure of beauty salons further diminishes the freedom of women in the war-torn country. The UN mission in Afghanistan has asked the Taliban officials to immediately withdraw its decision. Regarding uh, the closure of the beauty salons, uh, the UN assistance mission in Afghanistan today called on the de facto authorities to halt the edict closing beauty salons. Unama notes that this new restriction on women's rights will impact negatively on the economy and contradicts stated support for women's entrepreneurship. And uh, the UN mission remains engaged with stakeholders seeking a reversal of the bans. Currently, working in hospitals as nurses and doctors is the only job that women can do in Afghanistan. When the Taliban came to power for the second time in 2021, it claimed that women would be accorded every right within the confines of Sharia law. 
However, in the months that have followed, the de facto rulers have imposed harsh restrictions on women's education and their access to employment. Taliban authorities began enforcing a ban on Afghan women working for the UN and international aid groups. Though the Taliban government's hatred for women in public life and giving them equal human rights is well known, but they have stooped to new laws after coming to power for a second time in 2021. This time, they have passed regressive laws which have banned girls from studying in school and colleges. They have stopped women from working. And more recently, they have banned the beauty parlors. The international community should not recognize the Taliban government till it gives equal rights to women. The Taliban regime has failed to earn recognition from any UN member state because of their rigid and intransigent mode of governance. Their inability to transform their mindset on issues such as women's freedom. The de facto authorities should understand that a country can't survive in the 21st century by pursuing a retrogressive and ultra-conservative approach. The eventual outcome of suppressing the freedom and creativity of women will be the erosion of Afghan society. Banning women's movements, curtailing all their freedom, health and education will augment frustration and anger among the Afghan women. In turn, the wrong message will be delivered to the world that the Afghan people are socially backward and can never live a normal life. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.